Welcome, everybody. Um, I hope you're all having a good time. Uh, my name is Michael. Um, I'm in the develop development team of the IoT service from the SAP. And today I'm talking about the IoT service, how we run it. Of course, I want to show you a little bit also a demo that, that, that you know what you are talking about. And of course, since we're here at the Cloud Foundry Summit, uh, we also want to jump into like what are the challenges? So what are we leveraging from Cloud Foundry? and how this all fits together. But before we start, uh, you might have seen already some presentations um, about uh, IoT today or in the past. Um, just a short motivation. Um, of course, IoT is about connecting things, devices, so whether it be machine or robot, and collect data from these devices and of course make meaningful uh, value out of that, so connected to applications like predictive services, remote maintenance, and whatever scenarios you can have. And of course, the challenge is how do we get this data, right? Because these machines rely, of course, and how big they are, how much data they produce, what kind of data they produce, maybe structured data or unstructured data. Then, of course, how they talk to each other, right? So we are talking there about protocols. Um, so that you see it's a huge heterogeneous world. Um, and this is, of course, a big challenge. And in order to get this data from these devices, um, you need some kind of data ingestion. And that's the promising of an IoT service, basically to collect the data uh, from these devices, connect these devices, uh, even they rely on their protocols and, of course, in their characteristics, and then provide this data to the applications. I mean, I just not now talked about, let's say, collecting data. Of course, it's also the other direction. Uh, sometimes you maybe want to change the configuration at the device or even send two commands to them. So we are talking now about, let's say, about bidirectional communication. So you have devices on the one hand collecting via sensors data. So whatever this may be, maybe the temperature or a certain status. And on the other hand, you want to send commands to the devices up to even firmware updates for software. Um, and of course, this is a challenge what we are facing. Right. Now, um, what I'm talking about now is an offering which is called SAP Cloud Platform Internet of Things. So this is basically what I call and refer here now to IoT service. Um, it's based uh, on an acquisition. So last year we acquired a company based in Italy called Blood One. And um, this has been very strong in connecting a set of devices and supporting a variety of protocols in the IoT space. And of course, we move this into the cloud, into the Cloud Foundry environment. This is why I mentioned here now for the Cloud Foundry environment. We started with a better program because it's really important to listen to the customer, uh, what are the needs, may it be like how to collect the data, where to connect, collect the data, and what kind of data, right? So uh, one example, and we even have it in the audience, uh, was with Mitsubishi, where we presented a demo at the Hannover Fair, so how to collect the data, and then visualize this in a, in a according manner. So there we collected the data from a robot. And um, after a certain time, we got all this feedback, uh, of course, put it right into the uh, development, and basically uh, offered the service now since uh, May this year, um, we offer the service. Um, we run first on Amazon Web Service. Um, so this is our basically first uh, cloud provider. Um, of course, we are intending uh, building on top of SAP Cloud Platform. Therefore, we are using this multi-cloud approach. Uh, I will talk about this uh, at a later moment. What is the name of the exciting customer? Plat1. Plat1. So P-L-A-T dot one. Now, um, since um, I want to go a bit more into the detail, uh, I pulled out an architecture slide um, which shows on high level what components we are talking about. I'm always talking about devices, so connecting devices. So what we see on the left side uh, are devices which may talk different protocols. What we support out of the box is the communication via MQTT, so this is a very common protocol in the IoT space, and of course HTTP to the cloud. And now in the center, what you see is the IoT service running basically as a backing service on AWS. And with that, we have multiple components. One is the IoT Gateway Cloud. Uh, 
Maybe some of you have listened to the integration of BRM, so this is why it might be familiar to you. And the IoT Gateway Cloud is basically the connection point which provides a variety of protocols. Actually, there are two running two instances because one for MQTT and one for HTTP. Then this data is sent to the IoT messaging service. This is basically our message broker. Underneath, we have an active MQ. So basically, we can publish all messages to our internal message broker and then handle the data. And that's the responsibility of this core component. Um, so to persist the data, uh, we currently store the data in a Postgres database and of course provide according APIs to create devices, uh, to create, let's say, the modeling of a device, so what data they can talk to, for example, and of course getting the device, device data via API. So we have a strong approach that we say API first, so this is really key. Uh, so whatever you want to do with the platform or with the service, you can do via API. And of course, on top, uh, we are leveraging also this API via an according user interface. We call it the IoT service cockpit. So this is what you see on the top right. Um, this is basically our user interface for creating, visualizing, visualizing some data, and of course, dealing with the service. Now, since there might be some devices who don't talk HTTP or MQTT, um, we are having another component, or basically the component you see I mentioned before, which is the IoT Gateway, which is basically a Java runtime with an OSGI container, which can also run on the edge side, which means it's not running in the cloud. You have the ability to install this on-premise, uh, and therefore you are able also to talk other protocols. So we support out of the box beyond HTTP, MQTT, for example, file adapter, so in case you have legacy files, or you have uh, structured data in a CSV format, XML format, or whatever have you, you can uh, connect to these files, get the data out of that in a structured format, and send this to the cloud. Similar approach we have for Co-op, SNMP, and Modbus. These are also our very common standard, standard protocols. And of course, there are more to come. So for example, we are investigating in OPC UA. So this is a very common protocol in the manufacturing space, but of course, uh, we want to be open there uh, and allow even partners or customers to develop their own. So this is really important. So once you have a device, maybe it's a very specific protocol in your environment, uh, what do you do then? For that, uh, we will offer an SDK, which allows you as a partner or as a, cust uh, or as a customer to pro uh, develop your own protocol. And I mentioned that this is a Java runtime with an OSGI container. And of course, this has ability to deploy the things during runtime, and this is exactly what we are doing. So we can install, update, and upgrade these individual adapters for these specific protocols via the cloud on this Edge software, which means whether you develop your own adapter or we use one of the standard adapters, you can manage them via the cloud and basically put them onto the IoT Gateway Edge. And with that, actually, we already uh, talked about the first part. So we have now the ability to connect to devices with various protocols. And then, of course, we send this data I mentioned already uh, to our internal message broker, so the messaging service that we use JMS. And then, of course, uh, have according APIs and whatever um, to provide this data. Now, what do we do with this data? Um, yeah, I mentioned already that we store this data in a Postgres database. Um, of course, this is one option. But then I talked also to make this application, uh, this data available for the applications. Um, we publish the data to a Kafka cluster. Of course, we have a big data stack afterwards, so to do some data retention. So we are talking about uh, a HANA database, so as a hot storage, so we can do a strong analytics on top, then we can store the data in Cassandra or even S3. And on top of that, we have an, we call it so IoT application enablement. So we have a thing model which uh, enriches the data with semantics. So I talked about that we have structured data in a certain format which we are collecting, which we are providing to the application. And therefore, we are able basically to uh, yeah, enrich this with semantics and build applications on top. With application, I mean something like predictive analytics, connected goods, and all these applications, what, can, what you can have or even that customers or partners can develop their own applications since we are their leveraging Cloud Foundry. So you have your own, let's say, build packs 
or basically are able to deploy your applications there. Um, customers and partners are able to develop their applications and exactly use the data out of the model what we are providing. So this fits the whole picture. So we are talking about the data ingestion. We are talking about managing or basically providing the ability to connect the various devices with different protocols and of course needs. We are talking about the bidirectional communication. So we are not only sending the data to the cloud, we also can send commands to the devices. Then of course we have a coding persistency layer. We are connecting to certain platform servers from SAP Cloud Platform. So namely here Kafka and of course uh, Postgres and further are, are to, going to become. And of course providing this data to the applications in order to make this available exactly there as a Cloud Foundry layer. Now, what is this in the end, what we are providing? Uh, we were talking a long time, so are we going on top of Cloud Foundry or are we going on the YAS layer? So currently, the IoT service, it's a backing service. And there, of course, we are leveraging of some benefits what Cloud Foundry brings. So we have our own service broker there. Um, so we are using full Bosch deployments. So we have different plans for sizing when we provision the IoT service. And of course, we use the Bosch director for provisioning the instances, right? So I can easily go and do a REST call just press, uh, say what sizing I want to have, so which Bosch plan, and then I easily have an instance automatically deployed on AWS. So this is, of course, a huge benefit what we are having, um, but there are also some challenges which I will come later to um, when we go that. Now, um, of course, we are integrating with uh, certain services as well. Um, I mentioned not so far, like, how do we do security? So whenever we connect a device, um, to the cloud, uh, we need some kind of security, and therefore authentication, we use certificates. Uh, there we use a trust center service from SAP uh, in order to get device certificates in order to have a secure communication. I mentioned already the Kafka, so basically a Kafka broker in between uh, to send all data to, to make it available in our big data storage for the applications, and for example, AWS RDS, where we store currently, for example, the metadata, so the device model, uh, and what have you. And unfortunately, we have to manage some components even ourselves, so like a Bosch director, service broker, and even ElkSec. Um, of course, there we are leveraging also from the platform services from um, SAP Cloud Platform, but this is something, uh, of course, we have to manage, and of course, um, um, yeah, this is a challenging thing for us. Now, before I go into the uh, demo, um, I want to shortly mention the device model, what you have, because sometimes we talk about devices, machines, and what have you. For that, uh, I brought up a short picture to explain shortly the device model. I talked about gateway and protocols. Um, so let's assume we have a device talking HTTP. Um, so then uh, we are talking uh, really a device, a physical device, which has a unique address, which you address. So for example, an IP address. And uh, within this device, we have an additional abstraction layer, which is sensors. You can think of a, of a car which has an engine and which has some tires. Of course, they have totally different semantic sensors and uh, how you address them. So this is why we have an additional abstraction layer. And of course, we want to have a reusability. So let's assume you have four tires and each tire has a temperature sensor. Uh, you don't want to model each one itself, so what type kind of data it's sending and so on. So we introduce an entity so-called sensor type, which you can reuse. And what does a sensor type actually does? Yeah, it defines what data we can send uh, to the device or the device is sending to the cloud. And there we're talking about capabilities. I mentioned something like a temperature value already, which would be one property. So like, let's say, a double value uh, sending to the cloud. And if you have more than that, you can encapsulate this within one capability. Um, so now let's go to a, to a short demo. So um, I have not bring a big, huge machine with me now. Um, so I thought something, what, what is light and what is handleable? Um, so I have here such a sensor tech. Uh, it's from, uh, basically it measures temperature, acceleration, and what have you. But this one is talking Bluetooth, so it does not have internet connectivity. So therefore I'm just using my mobile phone here, which connects to Bluetooth to this device. 
and then I want to uh, send this device. But firstly, let's see how we do that, right? So what you see here now is the IoT service cockpit, basically the user interface, which I was mentioning in beforehand. And here I already modeled and created certain devices. One which you see here is already, this is our sensor tech here. Um, and if you look into that, I mentioned we are talking about structured data, about modeling of capabilities. And here you see that this sensor here has uh, certain capabilities, so sending, for example, the acceleration, the pressure and temperature, so exactly what I was talking about. And if you even press on this one, you will see, okay, this is a single precision value, so basically a float value, which is defined here, so this is the data what we are expecting. Uh, and even we have a measurement unit, so a measure unit, so what we are expecting here Celsius, so not that you're wondering that it's really that cold here, so these are Celsius values, right. Okay, so this is what we, uh, what we are doing, and I mentioned about certificates, so what you can do here even, uh, you can download your certificate specifically for this device. I did this already beforehand, so I downloaded a certificate uh, on my laptop, and if we now show, let's see um, if we are receiving some data. So for that, um, I select this, uh, this node here, or let's say our device, and I wanna say some real-time data. So there's nothing coming at the moment, um, nothing is incoming, uh, but for that, let's use uh, basically the console. So I use curl, basically this is a tool for sending HTTP commands uh, or HTTP posts, and what I'm doing now, I'm sending here um, basically an HTTP post with my certificate. So I have a certificate file on my laptop and a, and a key for that. I send this with exactly one value here. Uh, the value here is zero um, to the specific device to my instance. So I just do this um, two times. And what we should see now here, uh, so there's a two times a value zero arrived. So now since that you, you also want to see something, um, so I have now here a value which is 21. So you see this here on the lower corner. So I sent now the value 21 two times. So via HTTP. And if you, if you go back to our cockpit, we nicely see that the data arrived. So this simply shall show uh, the ability that sending com, uh, basically measures uh, with certain semantics to uh, to the cloud, and yeah, to show this even more more practical, uh, I said um, I have now the sensor tech here. So this was just um, some data sent via curl. So what I have here now um, is uh, um, the mobile. Uh, the mobile. So I'm starting now an application which is actually connecting to this instance, which I just showed where I showed the cockpit. So I connect to this instance, then I will select my device, which is currently this device over here. Uh, which is now popping up. And last but not least, I decide how to send the data. We just have seen uh, HTTP, so let's now use MQTT. Uh, certificate is already installed here, so this is why the connectivity works. So now I'm connecting to the, um, to the cloud via MQTT. And if we now go back to our cockpit, um, we have to select a different device because now it's a uh, sensor tech with MQTT. And let's see if we see some real-time measures. And there we go. Um, so this is the real-time measures here now on the upper chart um, for this temperature. So if I hold it in my hand, I should see that this temperature is increasing. There we go. And of course, I can have in even some more fun. So not only selecting the temperature, also maybe the acceleration. So and uh, if I set these three values and just turn this around, you will see that this is all flipping up and down. Um, so we are talking here now about, let's say, real-time uh, data consumption and ingestion. Uh, I mean, now I'm using the interval of one second, but it shows basically that we are able to collect the data from a device, uh, push this to the cloud. Uh, this data is persisted in parallel, uh, and then, of course, this uh, user interface uh, subscribes to the data and makes this available for the end user. Um, of course, this is only in the cockpit. Uh, the same, of course, applies for the application. So if you now develop an application on top, uh, you exactly make use of this. So you have the semantics, 
So what data we are talking about, so is it a temperature value or something else? You know what data format we are talking about, so are these integer double values and whatever have you. And then of course puts this in the cloud. Right. Now what have been the challenges? I mentioned uh, there's, um, there was a strong decision, so where do we put the IoT service? Because it would be really beneficial to make use uh, of CPaaS, put it on the Cloud Foundry layer, uh, but there have been some challenges. And one of them is we are talking about high scale data ingestion. So we're not talking about one device or hundreds of devices. There are use cases with thousands of devices and even more. Uh, which, we are we, which we want to connect to and collect data to and even send data to these devices. And this, of course, evolves over time and there's not only one use case, there are multiple use cases and therefore you need a huge number of concurrent connections uh, to get this data ingestion. Um, so we had a challenge, that's a Go router, uh, which is basically the single entry point for any connection. Um, does not scale or is not suited basically for such high scale scenarios, right? So we just limited or ran out of number of concurrent connections and um, how you can connect the data to, let's say the Cloud Foundry layer, right? So this was one decision um, why we had to move basically to the YAS layer. And then secondly, uh, this is why I basically focus on this scenario with MQTT. Um, so there are certain ports and of course certain protocols necessary. And um, at the Cloud Foundry layer, you have really limited support uh, in terms of protocols. So HTTP is supported. Um, and of course, this is one limit uh, we cannot face because we talk about IoT, about connecting a variety of protocols. And of course, this is a very strong requirements. And if we don't manage that, we don't, can, cannot talk about IoT, right? Um, so we, this is why we decided to go to the YAS layer. Uh, but even there, you have some challenges because if you go to the YAS layer, you miss all the nice features which you have in the past layer, right? So I mentioned that we have some, let's say, our self-managed services like Bosch Director and whatever have you, and uh, like the ELK stack. So everything which is about scaling, so basically just provide another instance, uh, uh, fail overcome and logging and of course monitoring, whatever comes with the pass, you lose, right? So you have to do it yourself on the YAS layer, um, which is of course quite challenging because um, uh, it's additional effort um, and it's additional infrastructure which you have to maintain, operate and whatever. So the last thing is about scalability and multi-tenancy, right? Um, so we need to scale out for certain components. Let's take certain components like the IoT gateway. It would have been nice if this instance or this uh, runs on the Cloud Foundry layer, you can easily just create another instance or container and whatever have you, uh, but we're on the YAS layer, right? Um, of course, there are options as well, but you have to do it differently. Um, and of course, this is something which we are working out. So pick out individual components, how to scale them, and of course, we are discussing putting certain components uh, on the Cloud Foundry layer. Um, of course, as I said, um, we are still there and um, in the integration process, but this is of course challenges we are facing. And there, of course, like the first ones, again, we come to this question, so how can we improve with the Go router? So how to support these high scale scenarios on the Cloud Foundry layers and even, even introduce additional protocols because it won't stay with HTTP and uh, with MQTT. Uh, of course, there are much, uh, many other protocols we want to support, especially on the Cloud Foundry layer. And this is exactly um, where we are going to go uh, to. So we are going to introduce multi-tenancy at instance level. So what I've showed you in the cockpit, I logged in with basically a tenant uh, on the application layer. So we have a very fine grade access control, which means you have certain devices and you can exactly decide which user within which environment or tenant we call it uh, can have access to data or create devices. And of course there are certain roles. <coughs> uh, but we are talking about here now about multi-tenancy. So to have not only let's say an instance provided via Bosch release so that you have even 
multiple tenants within this environment. And of course, this is a challenge <coughs> which we are facing now. I mentioned already the scale out, so for individual components. So of course, we will discuss uh, which components put on the Cloud Foundry layer. And uh, last but not least, multi-cloud. Right, so what I've shown you is running on AWS. Um, I mentioned that we are also making use of <coughs> sorry, AWS RDS. And, <coughs> and of course, um, we need to get rid of that. And we are connecting to certain platform services. And this is, of course, what we are working on. <coughs> I'm sorry. Um, then when I logged in, I have not shown you, uh, you this. You go um, with your own user management. <coughs> and um, of course, um, it's very important if you're dealing within the application and when you want to go to the IoT and of course managing these, of course, these are different roles of users and certain type of users. Uh, but that's what you're going there, of course, integrating with UIA so that even Cloud Foundry users are able to log in of your service. And last thing, uh, what I also would like to mention, um, I've shown um, the authentication via certificates. So, um, of course, this is the most common used um, uh, security mechanism uh, for in the IoT space. But um, like uh, token-based authentication like OAuth, this is something which is easy to handle, and of course, especially for starting scenarios, whatever, because this is really important. Uh, we use this also in our IoT service in the Neo environment, so basically one of the um, other IoT service, and this is also what we are going to introduce um, so that we have a token-based authentication uh, for certain devices. Yeah, as I said, uh, there are many challenges. Uh, so it's not just that you take a yeah, service and put it uh, in the Cloud Foundry environment and it works for all use cases. Uh, IoT has its specific requirements. Um, so this is important to note. Um, and of course, um, I hope I could give you a, a short introduction uh, what uh, the IoT service are about, how we make use of this, what the challenges are, and of course, looking forward to feedback. So thanks for your attendance and thank you.